this is going to be another one uh, in a a few. Like I said, I think I have 15 or 20 or so of them still left to talk about. Reviews that I don't actually have physical copies of because they came from a local university library. So I read them and had to return them. But I read them a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I don't have them to show to you. But again, up on the, um, the little screen capture thing, I'll put a picture of the book so you can see what it looks like. The book I'm going to talk about and uh, review for you tonight is called The Clash of Gods. An Interpretation of Early Christian Art, and it's by uh, Thomas F. Matthews. It's a, it's a common assumption now in the art historical world that much early Christian art, uh, particularly from the 4th, 5th, and 6th centuries, portrays the Roman emperor as a kind of demigod and intercessor between our world and that of the divine imbued with a kind of ultimate power. This is what the author uh, calls uh, the emperor mystique. In fact, this idea might even shore up the more commonly held belief that the church and the state were united for much of the Middle Ages. In this book, The Clash of Gods, Matthew critically examines this assumption and comes to what I thought were some pretty interesting conclusions. According to him, it's largely the work of three scholars um, that, that allowed us to believe this and that are responsible for the rise of what he calls the emperor mystique in art. Um, the first one is art historian Andrew Graber. Uh, the second one is the medievalist Ernst Kantorowicz. And the third one is archaeologist Andreas are folding. Um, along with collectively contributing to the emperor mystique, they come from Tsarist Russia, uh, Wilhelmine Germany, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, respectively, and all harbored a great love for imperial greatness and yearned in some way for the return of that imperial greatness. In order to do this, they all retroactively read signs according to the author, of vanished empire into the early Christian art they were studying at the time. As Matthew says, quote, the need to interpret Christ as an emperor tells us more about the historians involved than it does about early Christian art itself. The scholarly apparatus that Matthews brings to bear on his argument is pretty impressive. The vast majority of the book looks at individual pieces of art, arguing for an interpretation against that of the emperor mystique, none of which I'll recapitulate here uh, because the arguments can get a bit involved. Um, it could even be convincing, but uh, I will confess to not knowing uh, enough about the art of the period in question to sort of uh, absolutely say how convincing they are. One thing that I can say is that Matthew's argument seems to exhort the reader into an either-or reaction toward the, the three aforementioned scholars. Um, as Peter Brown, the Princeton professor of, uh, and often writer on the post constantinian Christian world, said in a review of the same book, Matthews thinks that either representations of Christ betray artistic conventions that must mirror faithfully in visual content of contemporary court ceremonials and imperial representations, and further must communicate the overbearing message associated with such ceremonials and representations, or they communicate often the exact opposite. Another unspoken assumption of the book that Matthews does nothing to repudiate is that uh, the thesis would in some ways suggest that you dismiss not only the emperor mystique, but also the entire body of scholarship of Kantorowicz, Grabber, and Arfoldi. Um, Grabber uh, and Arfoldi might not be as well read today. Uh, Kantorowicz is because he wrote a um, pretty widely read book that's still around uh, called The King's Two Bodies, um, which is considered a, a pretty indispensable text uh, in in the study of 
what's called medieval theology, um, political theology, especially. Um, I certainly do uh, not want to suggest that the book is a hatchet job. It's not. It's it's provocatively written and interesting and well argued. I think Matthews achieves something lastingly important by giving us a book length treatment that resists what is still in some quarters a widely held assumption. Um, I would just regret to see this book read as something more than an unfortunate interpretive misreading that was made by a group of otherwise superb, astoundingly learned people. So uh, if you're interested in uh, early Christian art from the 4th through 6th centuries AD, say, um, this is a an interesting book that will uh, challenge your assumptions about it and uh, is uh, was definitely worth the time. So uh, check it out, guys. Bye.